the video on setting up your uh, Metavis RT3 and uh, TYT MD380. And this video is sponsored by GB7KM.com. So we've already talked about quite a lot of the information uh, of how to set up your radio. We've touched on how to set up a channel. We've explained how the zones are clustered together. We've talked about our digital RX group lists and how they work and how they will uh, allow you to hear talk groups that you're not necessarily on but uh, might be transmitting on the same slot that you're on. Uh, we've talked about digital contacts and talk groups which are all in the same information box here. Uh, the one thing left to give you a little bit more information on is the scan list. Now as I mentioned in the uh, in the last video, personally I don't like scan lists. Uh, they're very slow. Um, they are they they will drain your battery uh, very very quickly, um, and I tend to find that. Um, uh, uh, this is a, no disrespect to anyone, but the majority of people that tend to like to use scan lists uh, tend to be uh, people that are struggling to get their head around the concept of uh, digital radio and they are still identifying each individual talk group as different channels and you know they they want to be able to scan from one to another and physically one at a time know which channel they're on uh like i said i do find that um uh, a little bit uh difficult to to work with because like i said it's not really how uh, digital scanning should be working when we have received lists but the retivis rt3 will allow you to do it it will allow you to scan both digital and analog so uh, what you need to do is once you've set up your zones and set up your channels, come into the scan list and you need to create your scan list. So we've created some here. We've created a, a GB7KM scan list, as you can see, and we have added all of our GB7KM talk groups into this uh, scan list here and the computer sorry the radio will actually go through when you activate scan and turn scan on when you're on any of these channels press your scan on button it will then go through and scan each channel one at a time uh, now you can obviously set priorities uh, so that obviously it gives preference and keeps checking back onto certain channels and what have you you can do all that and you can also set uh, your tx designated channel so in other words when you key up uh, what is it going to transmit on is it going to transmit on a certain channel or is it going to be the last active channel that, that's obviously come live um, you can obviously set your your hold time so how long it's actually going to sit and listen between uh, between moving on as well uh, very simple to do, but once you've set it up in your scan list, you would then need to go back in to every single one of these channels. So you, you've done this, you would then need to go find the channel. So let's just find 001KM. You need to come in here and then change the scan list option to GB7KM. So you need to do it in both sections. You can't just do it in one. You need to set it in both sections. Otherwise it won't work properly and you will find that you get uh, get problems and you might even find that your radio might crash on you when you try and activate scan mode. So you need to place uh, all of the channels into the scan list and then go into each channel and specify the scan list that, that that channel has been assigned. So it does seem a little bit like you're doubling up on work. And I totally agree on some of the other radios. Um, you don't have to double this up, but um, you'll be paying a lot much more, a lot more for the radio. You know, you, you unfortunately, you, you know, if you're only paying 110 quid for a radio, you know, you do have to expect to, uh, to, to, to put a little bit of effort in yourself. So that's how to set up your scan lists. Like I said, I don't endorse them for the for digital channels, for analog channels. I understand they're great because uh, you know there is nothing else. Digital channels, you don't need to do it. Uh, so let's have a quick talk about the convention of how we use the the DMR repeater. Now, again, we did touch on this earlier on. Now, of course, we have the. Um, uh, the the talk groups the uh, so the calling channels which are one two thirteen and two three five there are principal calling channels that we're using at the moment in the United Kingdom 
uh, it's perfectly acceptable to to go to talk group one or talk group two um, and and use English language. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to use thirteen as the English language worldwide calling channel. You can use any of those one, two, or thirteen. Uh, is absolutely fine. Um, when you're on the calling channel, it is good practice. Always good practice. Whenever you're on DMR, always use. Uh, obviously your call sign is as as your license to uh, your license dictates but you should also announce the talk group that you are on now the reason for that is there's a lot of people out there that are using radios that do not have a display and if you're using a, a radio without display there's nothing more frustrating than hearing somebody uh, calling out uh, across the radio saying oh yeah um, uh, I'm, I'm listening for any calls but you've got no idea what talk group to go to to respond to that person because that person hasn't remembered to announce what talk group they're calling on. So, for example, uh, I might be on talk group one and you know calling out, uh, this is M3IZB, listening on talk group one for any calls. Be perfectly fine. I'm, I'm telling people what talk group I'm on so they, they can find me if they didn't happen to notice what it said on the display or if they didn't have a display they know where to come so always remember announce the talk group that you're using once you've made a contact on 1 2 or 13 or 235 it's at that point it would be appropriate to suggest QSYing so uh, if somebody comes back yeah I've got you um, should we QSY to 119 or 129 now, sometimes you'll get people that will uh, try and ask you to QSY to a talk group number that you don't have. Now, this is very common in some countries uh, where they, there isn't much information about how DMR is, is in use. Um, so do bear in mind, you can only QSY to the talk groups that, that you see here. Um, and you'll just need to tell them, I'm sorry, that that talk group's not available to me. Uh, perhaps uh, we can go to 119, 129, 113, 123, 80 or 81, depending on which talk group you're using. Um, but they are the most common talk groups and 99% of the people you will ever come across on DMR in whatever country will recognize these as the standard talk groups to try QSY to. Now they are user activated talk groups, the uh, the ones in italic. Now that does mean that if you were to just turn your radio on and think, mm, I'm going to go and sit and listen on talk group 80. Totally pointless exercise because if there is somebody talking on talk group, talk group 80, you're not going to hear it unless they're talking through your repeater already. So if there's two people talking uh, in the north of the country on talk group 80, you're not going to know anything about it until you press your PTT key. When you press your PTT key, it will tell the repeater that I'm here and I want to, to use talk group 80. Can you please turn it on? The repeater will then tell the Phoenix network. The Phoenix network will then deliver talk group 80 to the GB7KM repeater. And you will then hear that, that you know any traffic that's already on talk group 80 or you'll hear nothing if there is no no traffic on there so you'll often see uh information of, you know where people are just keying up once or very quickly on the uh, the user activated talk groups and that's because they're just keying up to turn it on to see if there's anyone there now there are timers set on these so if you do that if you activate a user activated talk group you will actually stop other people from being able to use the calling channels on that repeater so do use that with caution and this is another reason why the scan groups don't work very well because you can't scan a talk group that is user activated because you won't hear anything so uh, a, another reason why it, it doesn't work well if you were sat on talk group 80 though uh, and let's just use this for an example somebody did come up on talk group one and start calling uh, for uh, anyone to, to come back to them um, you would still hear that because if you've got it set up in your receive list your rx uh, rx list you would still hear that um, even though you're not set to talk group one you would be able to key up on the radio and go back to them on talk group one and obviously then uh, find a, a suitable channel to qsy to that's the advantage of using rx contact this Hope this video has helped and the, the suite of videos has helped. And if you have any questions, do contact us through GB7KM.